Hi everybody, I hope you're having an amazing week. I've been thinking recently about how it's kind of the end of the winter season in Australia, but how on the other side of the country it is beginning to turn into autumn time or fall time and it's still pretty cold over here so I thought to wrap up this little season I am going to cook with you guys. I'm going to be making Irish stew. I've never made it before. I'm going to try making bread rolls from scratch as well. It's a very ambitious meal to make but it is a weekend so I feel like I have time to fail and Hopefully it turns out okay. This recipe was sent to me by a friend years ago, but I didn't have a slow cooker at the time, so I've been waiting for the perfect time to try it out. And I got a slow cooker last year for Christmas or for my birthday, and I'm really excited to try it out. So let's go. So the first thing this recipe calls for are potatoes and carrots. Um, four carrots to be exact. And they said four potatoes, but the potatoes that I have are really small, so I put six potatoes. Hopefully that's okay. But I think you just kind of chop it into bite-sized pieces and then set them aside. easier for the end of the day. Next, I'm gonna add in a can of Guinness. It's really funny because Justin and I both hate the flavor of beer, but I think that it will taste good when we put it in. We'll have to see. Oh, it's busy, it's busy, it's busy. It's busy. Now I add a heaped spoon of flour and then 
I meant to add Worcestershire sauce. Gosh. I'm also meant to add a few splashes of Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. But I don't have that, so I'm going to use soy sauce because I googled it and apparently it's a good sub substitute. So I'm going to do that and then I just add salt and pepper. in. And the last thing that I do is I just add some beef stock until everything is covered. I forgot to add that I add bay leaves and it says sprigs of thyme. I don't have that so I'm just putting some dry thyme. much much later in the day but I thought I would bring you guys in with me as well while I try to make these bread rolls for the first time I am mildly terrified that I'm gonna mess it up but I'm gonna try it anyway and see how it goes I've already preheated the oven to 200 degrees Celsius and that is 400 degrees Fahrenheit um, it's technically 204 degrees Celsius that's 400 degrees Fahrenheit, but I'm not fussy about the details. And I've also pre-greased the dish that I'm gonna be cooking the bread rolls in. So to start off, I need two tablespoons of melted butter, which I'm just cutting off now. And then I'm gonna stick it into the microwave to melt, because it's kind of room temperature at the moment. Once the butter is melted, I add in a cup of water. After you add in the water, you add half a cup of milk. And, and two tablespoons of honey. The scene is so much less aesthetic than this morning when I had a lot of energy but it's been such a big day that now I'm just kind of ah! now I'm just kind of in a rush to get this bread done. The recipe says then stir until it's all combined. I'm not sure how to combine the honey because it's kind of just like all lumping itself in there. But after you've mixed it up the recipe calls for you to put it in the microwave for one minute, so that's what I'm going to do now. The recipe says then you have to keep heating it in 15 second intervals in the microwave or in a pan until it's 140 degrees, no, 100, uh, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Hey Google, what is 110 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? 110 degrees Fahrenheit is 43.333 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it has to be 43.333 degrees Celsius. Um, I wasn't sure how I was going to find out the temperature, but it just says that it has to be warm but not hot to the touch so i guess i'll just stick my finger in um i might do 15 more seconds okay i've heated it two or three times it's the right temperature now 
Okay, now it's time to add the yeast. I don't know why that part seems the most scary to me, but I'm gonna give it a go. It says to pour the mixture that you've just made into the bowl of your stand mixer, mixer, which I got, I got the mixer for my birthday, so I'm excited to try it out. Just pour it in. It smells like um, my mum used to make honey and milk for me before bed when I was a kid. And then it says sprinkle the yeast evenly on top and it calls for one tablespoon of instant yeast. Sprinkling. Oh, it smells bready straight away. That's kind of interesting. Then you have to let the yeast activate for five minutes. So I guess I'll just let it itself. Okay, so once your yeast has had time to activate, you add three and a half cups of plain flour. So I'm just going to sprinkle that in now. Oh my gosh, it looks so funny going in on top of the yeast because the yeast is all like puffy. My cup doesn't really fit inside this jar either, so I have to spoon it into the cup. Okay, now I have to add it into my stand mixer. So the instructions pretty much say that I have to put it in my stand mixer with the dough hook attachment and I have to watch it if it's sticking to the sides, add more flour a quarter of a cup at a time um, until it's not sticking to the sides anymore and it's only slightly sticky to the touch and it's kind of all pulling from the sides and sticking together with itself. dough all cooked. It's so exciting to watch the dough all like come together in the bowl. So the next thing you need to do is you need to let the dough rise. So they just suggest that you put a damp uh, paper towel over the top or a damp hand towel and then you leave it for 15 minutes. Okay I'm about to check on the bread. Well. I have always loved those TikTok videos of when people uncover bread and they give it that first punch. I don't know why, but it seems very satisfying. I'm just taking my rings off because I don't want to get dough all through my rings. But I have a greased oven dish and... It says to split it into 15 equal sized small balls and spread them out onto the dish. So I'm gonna punch it. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. These little dough balls are actually really, is cute the right word? I'm gonna use the word cute. I don't know if that's um, the right kind of word. I don't know where to put these while I'm waiting either. I guess I'll just like put them back in the bowl. And then after you've made the balls, you let them, you put them on the tray and you let them rise. I think for another 15 to 20 minutes. This bread is so warm. I've never felt dough like this before. I think I've only really felt like batter, like cake batter or whatever. I think I might be making these dough balls too big as well, but we'll see. I'll make them first and then I'll have another look, reevaluate.
to spread out when they cook? Yeah, they grow. But there's no room for them to grow, right? And you rip them apart from each other. Ah, check you out. Being all like bread expert lady. That you want to poke one? Uh, no. Right. Do you want me to poke one? Don't poke it too hard if you do. Here, wait. Yeah, poke one. Just gentle. Oh, they are so soft. Yeah. Okay, now I just need to bake the little rolls. So I put them in the oven for 15 minutes or until they're golden brown. And then you brush them with butter at the end and you eat them. Okay, so I completely forgot to film taking everything out of the oven and opening up the stew, but I'll show you what it looks like right now. The bread turned out so nice and crusty and I'm so excited to put some butter on it and it looks delicious. And I think it's gonna go really well with the stew. All right, may I? Yeah, go for it. Okay, Justino, what's the review? Amazing. Fresh bread, there's nothing like it and you did such a good job for the first go. And now, it's stew time.